everyone, I'm Ingrid Anna and you're watching The Feel Good Show. I am really excited because today I have Megan Castron with me. And for those of you who don't know, Megan Castron is probably Oprah's favorite friend. She is definitely <laughs> the manifestation chick. So we're going to talk all about that today. And she's also a fabulous jeweler. And if you want to connect with Megan, she has you do videos every week and she's got a really amazing page on Facebook and it's called Jewel Chick Page and we've got the link at the bottom of the video so check it out. So Megan, thank you for joining me. Oh, it's fun, it's fun. It's so great, great to, to meet you. Yeah, you too. We've been chatting on Facebook for ages so yes, it's great. we have and I just really resonated with you because you've got such amazing energy and I don't know, I don't meet so many people who have that kind of energy so it's just such I a agree that's so true I love yeah, and I feel that with you too it is funny you don't always meet people with that same vibe thing. yeah no so it's awesome so today um, I've been traveling in Melbourne and we're sitting here in this amazing place which is uh, Megan's home but also her studio as you can see she's got all the jewelry lined up so can you tell me a little bit about your inspiration and where the passion for jewelry came from my grandfather was actually a real jeweler, like, you know, a diamond jeweler. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I never thought that I would have the patience for doing jewellery. And I've done lots of different things. I, my real inspiration for working and having my own money was I wanted financial independence because I didn't want to be married and think, you know, oh, I'm married and I... You don't have your own thing. You don't get married to, to leave, but you also don't stay married because you've got no money. You, yes. know? you know what I mean? Yes. So I wanted the freedom of being in the marriage because I wanted to be in the marriage. And that was inspired by Oprah, funnily enough. And so I love that. Yeah, and so I started painting plates, and then I've done a bed linen design. You know, I've had my range everywhere. But the jewelry, which is just pleasantly small, is amazing for me because I've met so many people, and I'm in control of it. You know, I I can work when I want to work. I you know I can sell it to who I want to sell it to. It's great. That's awesome. So who are your major sort of clientele? Is it just one on one pieces now that you're doing specialized? I have pieces? a lot. I'm the busiest time of the year for me is from the races to Christmas. Yes. So spring racing carnival, people bring their outfits to me. I love doing that. And you That's match my it with the actual thing. outfit. And... Yeah, I love designing to match an outfit. That's great. But I also love designing my own pieces, which usually revolve around my outfit. So. <laughs> <laughs> and do people usually ask you, like, I love the one that you're wearing right now. Yeah, I like this one. I really like this one. Um, yeah, quite often people will come and they, they just like the ones that are there. You yeah. know, because not everyone wants you to design something without them knowing what it's going to be. Yeah, definitely. You seem to use also, which I love, a lot of symbolism. Yeah, Is I that... do. I love that. Yeah, I like peace signs and hearts and, you know, angst and things. Yeah, I do. I like all that. Do you believe that with a symbol it actually creates a sort of energy with the product line as well? Because mm, you're, you're talking about yeah, peace, probably. you're talking about love. Probably, I guess so. I, I, I love it. Yeah, that's what it gravitated me to it because I love symbolism. Yeah. And I think we don't have enough of it in today's society, yeah. like all the god, old goddess. I'm like record. the old hippie chick wearing, you know, peace sign t-shirts and stuff. I do that all the time. Yeah, it's Do you? I do. I mean, I suppose when I had the Body Love clothing line, it was really about symbolism. And so I've just always loved that yeah, because it made love me it. feel good. And yeah. so I think your it sort of fits in with this whole show too because yeah. it is a real feel-good vibe type product line. Yeah. I love it. And I reckon we're at that. Well, I'm older than she is, obviously. No, but, no, you can't. But, you know, you get to a certain age where, you know, you can't wear Mickey Mouse on the T-shirt anymore. So I think we can still do a piece, son. It's true. That's very true. <laughs> but I think you could pull off a Mickey Mouse T-shirt for sure. I have got one, actually. You do? I do. Do you wear it? Do you wear it to bed? Oh, yeah, maybe to the gym. Well, I don't yeah. know. Sometimes. Oh, God. I have a funny story about wearing a really not cool t-shirt I didn't know what it meant but I had this, <laughs> yeah I, can't, oh, I won't even say what it meant but um yeah it was not good well, now we want to know what it was don't we yes no I'm not gonna say was it rude basically I could have had for JJ written on my <laughs> shirt but I didn't know it was an American slang word that I just That's thought so it funny. was really hip but yeah but it was not a bit embarrassing. I was wondering why I all the so guys. I thought know what I looked, the word was. I thought I looked really, really um, sexy at the gym. That's why all the guys were staring at me. But and is it a word that everyone in Australia knows? Not really. No. But anyway, would I know it if you said it? I'll just whisper it in your ear. <laughs> but let's keep going. Anyway, enough about that. We're moving along. And um, I want to also know, because you've got the best vibe, I want to know about your happiness philosophy. My happiness because philosophy. what is happiness to you and how have you cultivated that sense of joy? Happiness to me. I love doing, I love, you know, my family and my friends. Happiness is just being around people who get me. Mm. Seriously, it doesn't matter what social group they're from or, or anything. In fact, I've found 
that a lot of people from YouTube and Facebook, I actually can relate to even more Isn't sometimes than people in my own social group that I know. I found that. Because there's a lot of judgment that goes on. You know, when you, you put yourself out there and you're on the internet? Yes. It's like, you know, it's some space age thing almost because we are pretty new, you know, like it's new in Australia. YouTube's only been here for what, I think I'm four, five years. So mm -hmm. I've been on it for four. So, you know, People my age don't usually make YouTube videos. It's more like young kids or whatever. So when you're a mom and you're at the school and, you know, people can, you know, wonder your motives. And, and I, I don't know why they wonder because it's pretty much out there that I'm trying to create positivity. Yes. But, but do you um, think because you are, you do have that positive message in some way that makes people feel uneasy for some I odd reason? I think that what I wanted to do was I, I've created lots of different parts on my YouTube page mm. and I did go to social events. I've been lucky enough to have invitations to go to opening yeah, nights or to the Logies or so something like that. Things. Things, yeah. So I thought, because I still look at those things as exciting. Like when I go to the Logies, it's like, oh my God, there's Rebecca Gibney or whoever, you know what I mean? Like yes. it's not, it's, it's exciting to me. And so when I film, I am taking the normal person there like me to so the Logies. Sharing, They're not doing the, the Richard Wilkins thing. That's right. And so that was my intention, everybody. Yeah. My intention it's is to, to share. share the experience. Yeah. It is not to go, oh, look at me at the Logies. It's to say, here, this is what it's like to be the Logies as a normal person. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And um, I think that's such a great opportunity for people. So it would be really nice if people rejoice that and celebrate yeah, yeah. it rather than they don't need question, to question it. it. No, no they don't. There's nothing to question. No. Really, it's pretty simple. So, you know, you're talking a little bit about the fact that you are a mother which is fantastic. And I've met Max today, who's adorable. Max He's is 18, so cute. Yeah. Max, I'm in love. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> My partner's watching me right now. But, you know, yeah, I mean, as a teenager, he's an yeah, adorable guy. He's a good kid. So what would your advice be? And like, how have you raised such great kids? Like, I they seem so well balanced. just include them. And, you know, tell them fun stories about when you were growing up. You know, I've told them about my first kiss and stuff like that. You know, yes. like, if you sort of share in those experiences and, and talk openly, I think that makes a big difference. I do, do, definitely. And we but... do lots of stuff together. We go on lots of holidays together and, um, you know, the kids will still come to the movies with us. It's probably getting a little bit less now, but they've never been afraid to be seen with us. You know, like, it's yes. not like, oh, my God, Mum and Dad, we're not going out. We'll still go out for dinners together. All that, it's nice. That's really great, but it seems that you've got a very open way so you allow them to talk and share the, yeah. their lives with you and I think sometimes some uh, mothers may or fathers may get quite intimidated by like talking about have you talked about the birds and the bees about who they're dating yeah yeah, yeah. those yeah, sorts of things we talk about all that stuff so it's a very intimate you yeah. have an intimate close relationship yeah. you're talking to me before also about the fact that you are an avid user of Facebook yeah. and that in some way has created a deeper bond and then so many mothers that you know actually don't do that they're afraid or they don't want to be yeah. on Facebook and those people aren't even going to be watching us because they're afraid but people who are watching us are, and who know the whole power of social media it's amazing how many people are scared to go on it and they think oh my god i'm not going on facebook because everyone will know what i do but you know they can choose and that's what we need to teach people is that they can choose and they can also keep a little bit of an eye on their kids not you know proud you know go crazy looking at the page and writing comments because you know the kids don't want that but every now and then i might write a comment okay. and i've found the kids friends have befriended me because I am out there doing that. They think it's fun. But it seems that they, they still look at you like an adult. They respect you in your opinion, but because yeah, you're do. cool and you resonate with them on their level, they're yeah, open, they trust you it. and they, yeah. Mm -hmm, you, yeah. Because you can't criticize Facebook or judge your kids for being on it unless you've tried it, don't you think? Oh, completely. And I think that the way that you have that fun loving nature and you know, you can have a serious side and a motherly yeah. side, but you are kind of hip and you're doing the things that they're into. And I think sometimes yeah. we isolate ourselves from ch our children or even my friends if we're not kind of, you know how you fall out with yeah. friends sometimes yeah. if you're not into the same things. It's the yeah. same things with your kids or the yeah. younger generation, True. right? But I love Facebook, so. Me too. <laughs> and as you said, I've met so many great it. friends. My mother That's and awesome. father and they're, you know, my parents are in their 70s. Yes. Approaching 80 and they're on Facebook. Isn't that good? It's very, very good. Yeah. So as I said before, Megan is one of Oprah's most favorite girls. And I want to know a little bit about how you manifested that and how you, you know, kind of connect with a sense of desire and then bring it forward in your life. Well, I always wanted to meet Oprah because she inspired me, as I said earlier, with my business. So I wanted to be able to thank her, not because she's Oprah. Well, I mean, you know, of course I knew her because of that, but it was really because she was the person who inspired me. So to be able to thank her was super exciting. 
and by chance I met her in Hawaii and then had met different producers and so along the way I've been able to go back to the shows many times well you know four or five times and then in 2010 she actually remembered our whole conversation of when she'd taken the card off me and said I'll call you when I come to Australia and it was like oh she really does remember and she even told me the conversation it was very That's exciting full yeah on. so when she did that and then she made a YouTube video when she was announcing that she was coming to Australia and she said oh and I have conversations with people and I say I'll call you up because you know you've given me your card well that was me so when I'm watching that I'm thinking oh my god I wonder if she really would call me like you know it was a possibility and um and then when Harpo called me and asked if I would host 10 guests, you know, any connection to be on Oprah or on the Harpo show was like exciting to me. So um, that was great. But when she was at the door, that was like, that was amazing. Your mind. Yeah, I did not know. Everyone, I did not know. She didn't know. Don't she say you really did know because I didn't know. So many know. people have said to me, oh, but we knew three weeks before. Well, I didn't. Yeah. So I don't know how anyone else... It's funny, though, because I really did not know. Yeah, I think you looked very surprised. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course, you hope, you know. Yeah, you hope, yeah. You think, oh, you know, 10 people. I wonder if Oprah might pop in to see how we're going. But, you know, I didn't for one minute think she'd have dinner with us or sit next to me for two and a half hours. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. So just to wrap it up, I'd like to go on to our next video. But um, any advice that you have on women connecting to their desires and going for what they want? Because you seem like a person who just really go yeah. to what she wants I think that if you love doing something mm -hmm. then just get out there and do it because it's what makes you happy and it's not always about the financial side of things sometimes people get too caught up in thinking right I want to do this and I'm going to make a million dollars yes you know what I, I mean think, oh, I've been there in my past yes. I'm sure and it actually depleted in a way my life force and my energy because you come become so caught up in the end you're result thinking, exactly rather than the joy of actually creating yeah. what you're creating and so if you do what you love then the money might become a byproduct of that it might yes. not but at least you've been happy doing it definitely don't you think like, that's so important as a yeah. big that i agree with it completely and i also had money, to learn that know, one money, myself money's great you can go on a holiday and you can do stuff like that but it doesn't, if you're not happy and you go on a holiday, the holiday is not going to make you happy. Yeah, exactly. I heard this really great quote, something like that the cake is like, you know, the icing is all the extra things, like the material stuff, stuff that can actually leave yes. you at any time. But happiness is the cake and the icing are all these extra it's things. The extra stuff. Yeah, so I love yeah, that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Well, let's go and have some cake. Not, maybe, something healthy. She won't let me have cake. She <laughs> won't let me have sugar. Oh. <laughs> um, we're going on a cleanse together. So no, no cake for a few months. I know. Okay. Oh, my God. Well, Megan, thank you so much. And um, I'm going to have Megan back again, I hope, because she's gorgeous. And I love talking to you. So that thank you so fun. much for your time. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone, if you have any comments and you want us to answer any questions, please email me or put a posting here below. And you've been watching Ingrid again at The Feel Good Show. And thank you for watching and ciao. Bye. Bye.